the Dim Din Podcast, a safe space to talk about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions, and frustrations. Join us for conversations and stories that explore how embracing our differences leads to a balanced, strong, and harmonious world. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Dim Din Podcast, your very safe space to have conversations about misconceptions, perceptions, assumptions and frustrations in the African community, especially amongst us here in the diaspora. Today we're here to have another interesting but sensitive topic, just like we usually do. And I have two amazing guests with me. Today we're choosing to stay true to Nigeria. So most of our, <laughs> both of our guests are from Nigeria. And this is going to be an amazing conversation, I tell you. I'll pass it um, over to them to introduce themselves, and then we'll go over to the topic of the day. Ladies first? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, what do you? Uh, thank you so much, Patricia, yeah, for having welcome. us. My name is Rose Joshua. I, I'm in Edmonton, Alberta. Beautiful. From Nigeria. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And over to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks, Pat. Thanks uh -huh. for, for bringing us. We appreciate it. And so, Rose, thanks so much for coming to the as well. So, my name is Nosa. I'm based in Edmonton from Nigeria, as you say. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, happy to be here. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Well, we would like to learn some fun or historical fact about Nigeria. And so far, we have learned, for sure, that there are over 250 languages in Nigeria and that English is the language spoken in school. Yeah. What else can we learn about Nigeria from you both? Okay, I would say that uh, the River Ninja was not discovered by Mongo Park. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, it was discovered the by Nigeria. The River Ninja was already <laughs> there, Mongo Park just passed. <laughs> and they now said to you, like, if that's, you know, it's just like everything where, where um, the colonial masters would come and say, okay, we discovered this. That thing was there ages ago. So if you go back to history, which is not really taught in schools nowadays, is they say River Ninja was discovered by Mongo Park. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess like for the for the non African <coughs> people. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then of course we have uh, you know about the two hundred and fifty languages. There's three major uh, ethnic groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The well, I'm gonna have to do it alphabetically so nobody says I named <laughs> them. <laughs> <laughs> so the Hausa, the Ibo and the Yoruba. Okay. Yeah, outside. Uh, yes. So the houses are in the north, mm -hmm. the Igbos are in the south, mm. east, mm -hmm. south, south, and then the uh, Yorubas are on the west. Uh. Yeah. And then, of course, we speak um, uh, English because of all the languages. Now, Nigeria was, uh, uh, the f uh, Independence Day was uh, in 1960. 60, yeah. So we're 64 years. We're going to be 64 years in the next two and a half weeks. Ooh. Yeah. In the next three weeks, we'll be 64 so years. first. Celebrations yeah, coming one. up here. Yes, party time. Ooh. And, and you guys do it big. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to close the city, close the streets. Hey. Yes, 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 yes. And congratulations, by the way. Was it last year? Was when uh, I think a day or a month has been assigned? Yeah, that's in October. I think October 1st as well. Yeah, you made yeah. that in, in, in... It's coming. Canada. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. salute to you all. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Okay, yeah. so now to the topic of the day. One day, I was talking to uh, Mr. Nosa, and <laughs> he had mentioned something about black tax. Like, we were talking about podcasting and stuff, and he had mentioned something about black tax. And as he was explaining, I had a sense of what he was talking about. But to be honest, that was the first time that I heard mm -hmm. that word. And I've mentioned this to a few people who are like, mm, Patricia, what are you talking about? So season one, we had an episode on family responsibilities. Okay. And to those who do not know, black tax is somewhat similar to family responsibilities. So mm -hmm. let's take this as a part two of that conversation. But I bet we're going to dive a lot deeper into things as we talk about mm -hmm. this today. So we're going to pass it over to either one of you, whoever wants to take that on first, to please tell viewers, like myself, a few months ago, who mm -hmm. did not know, who do not know what black tax yes. is. 
What is it? Yeah. So why don't you go first? You're the banker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know. There's a ba- okay. There's some, somewhat there's a banking perspective yes, to it, but yes, you're yes. right. So, but basically, when we when we speaking last um, um, month or two months ago, mm-hmm. so the issue of black tax is something that's been around for a long time. If you go back to history, they'll tell you it started from South Africa. It's called the Ubuntu, where South African um, people who were who escaped from apartheid would send money back to their people. Mm. You know, so but it, it's not really, it's not really. It didn't I, for me, I don't think it started. It started a long time ago, Before because that. yeah. So so I'm going to two things. I just want to say throughout this topic, I will put in perspective. I'll use a lot of parables because I that's how I relate to people, mm-hmm. and I also try to, to. I'm not here to bash black tax. I'm just gonna say because some of us are, uh, uh, how would I say, beneficiaries of the concept of black tax. Mm-hmm. But I just want to say you know where it is and where. So black tax is where, very simply put. Wherever you are, even in your own country, you're responsible for a set of your family members or friends. Mm. And it's, it's taken a whole new shape and volume in the last 10 to 20 years, right? So you're in the diaspora, you're in Canada, and every month you get paid a salary, and then you send money back home to your mom, your brothers, your sisters. Somebody dies, they add you onto a WhatsApp group. And <laughs> you, have to, you have to send money home, right? So that's mm-hmm. essentially what black tax is. They say it's starting from South Africa, but to an extent, maybe officially, but you have to go back. The parable in Nigeria says it takes uh, a community, it takes a village mm-hmm. to, to, raise, a to raise a child. It's mm-hmm. an African adage, right? Mm-hmm. So if, if the village is raising a child, it means that, good or bad, there's a concept where everyone's responsible for that child to grow. So I feel that like black tax is probably at least 100 years old. Mm. Yeah. So it feels more like a responsibility than a choice at some point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. oh yeah, oh yeah. It's it's so so. I think that it's so the way we brought up in Africa, just mm-hmm. to, the, to the point of that adage, we're very communal. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember a few years ago when I when I moved from Nigeria to England to study, I just noticed that everywhere was quiet. You couldn't just go to somebody's house and say, "Hey, how you doing?" Well, back home in Nigeria, "Hey, good morning, my neighbors." That kind of a thing, right? So, so moving <laughs> moving to England. Everywhere is quiet. I noticed that you're on your own here. Yeah. Mm. So you, you all got to understand that culturally we're different. In Africa, we're communal. You're a brother's keeper. You know, come join me. The first, the first, you come into my house, I'm eating. Wash your hands, join me. Mm-hmm. Here, you know, with the culture here, which is nothing bad with bad about it, it's just that they're also individualistic. It's a mm-hmm. DIY mentality, right? Do so it yourself. Do it yourself, mm-hmm. exactly. So those are, I, I, I think those nuances, Mm-hmm. One has to understand culturally, then to understand why we do what we do. Right. Hence, you know, we believe in black tax. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And I um, remember, like, coming here, yeah. um, the first job that I had, mm. my father, God bless his heart, very amazing man. Mm. He said, uh, so your first salary is supposed to be divided amongst people that helped raise you uh, it's a way of like gaining the blessing and the approval and True. like saying thank you as mm-hmm. well because that's that's our way of knowing right mm. um so i can definitely relate to that aspect of like plus i think when we were back there mm-hmm. it was the norm it was an expectation so yeah. even i think when i when i was back home my dad was supposed to do this 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 and yes. that yeah. and that and me i was just supposed that's to sit so there looking pretty because yeah. i was this child yeah. um but coming to you um dr rose why is this conversation important now mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just going <coughs> to add one thing about the <coughs> definition. Mm-hmm. So the we're calling it black tax, mm-hmm. but it's actually, it's a sociological phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's not unique to black people. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay, so it's sociological. Uh-huh. It's because even among the Latinas, the Indians, the, Indians, the Philippines, the Filipinos, yeah, the Filipinos, mm-hmm. it's a sociological thing. But you know, because but when you bring it home to Africans, mm-hmm. then it's now black, right? Mm. But mm. it's sociological again because we're all born in families, and you know, m- my sister-in-law is a Filipino. Fili- she's a Filipina. Mm-hmm. Mm. When when she got married to my family, she's our wife. Mm. But they still have responsibilities to their parents back in the Philippines, right? Mm. So it's a sociological thing. Mm. So what we, I guess what we need to kind of figure out mm. is how, t- you know, how it works in our specific black community mm-hmm. and how we can evolve to make it better. Yeah. 
Right. Right. Yeah. For Indian folks, it's called brown tax, actually. Brown tax, yeah. <laughs> so they, they have brown tax. Oh. They have all kinds of labels. For, yeah. So yeah. the tax is a tax. The you're being yeah. taxed to do something. It's a sociological yeah. And whichever area you're looking at it, then. Yes. B but we don't have white tax, do we? Well, to be honest, tax. <laughs> well, they, would, it, it, they wouldn't call it white tax. Mm. But if you look at, um, historically, people in the s little towns, the mm -hmm. small towns, mm -hmm. when they leave the small town to go to the city, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's say they move to Los Angeles, California. They still send money to their f uh, family back in Oklahoma. Or mm. Mm. So, so it's, it's, it's a family concept, mm. which is that concept that when somebody is doing good, mm -hmm. doing well, mm -hmm. they feel a sense of responsibility to no back. the family yeah. back Kay. home, wherever home is. Okay, okay, okay. And so with that, with you adding that piece to the definition, we definitely, it's very important. It gives a lot more context mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. We're having this conversation now. Mm. For there to be a conversation, there has to be a reason. There's a reason, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Why is this conversation important to have here and now mm. yeah. amongst diasporans? <sighs> right, so, so um, if there are many, many, many aspects of, of black tax. And um, I think we can just kind of converse. I don't think that one hour is enough for us oh, to talk about it. The whole week. Yeah. But we can just sort of touch on a few things. So, yeah. so one thing is this. Um, so I come overseas. Mm -hmm. Well, take it back a little bit. My father trains me in school, suffers to train me in school. Codes and uncodes. Uh, yes, quote unquote, <laughs> yeah, they, you know, sacrifice and they do everything to make sure I go to school, mm -hmm. I go to college, I come to university and then I come overseas. It makes them feel a sense of entitlement. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That, okay, we did all that for you, so <laughs> now it's your turn. It's an investment. It is an investment, so mm -hmm. there should be a return on investment, investment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay so that's one aspect okay mm -hmm. but the other aspect mm. which uh we can you know why don't you talk of the second or oh you want me to introduce no, it yeah, yeah, okay so the other aspect then is if i'm here and i'm responsible for the whole village back there remember that <laughs> it's just me <laughs> <laughs> who is responsible for, oh, for the yeah. whole village <laughs> so now is this one person who has to now work and be a slave yeah. for life Mm. to the entire village and uh, which uh, which never stops so yeah. we need to ask ourselves i mean like questions about how long is this going to be and how mm. can we make it better how can we stop at some point the the um apprentice needs their freedom mm. true mm. at some point the the person you raised needs um, basically the people at home need to grow up yeah mm -hmm. so there's so many things anyway i'm gonna shut up <laughs> <laughs> no but she makes, she makes some very valid yes, points yes, right yes, yes. so I'll, I'll, I'll digress and just talk about the types and mm -hmm. i'll talk about the economic imp economic implications of the black tax and i'll give you numbers a few numbers mm -hmm. so um for me there are different types the ones where your family is expecting you to do a return on investment. You have friends who went to school with you who, to so, so to speak, just throw you into a WhatsApp group and say, somebody's father died and you have to contribute. That's Somebody's awesome. getting married. Somebody's getting married. There's mm -hmm. no question. And it's, it's done. There's also the piece where, um, and, and maybe we can go into that, the piece where you you feel the obligation by yourself to do it mm -hmm. for some members of your family. And it's to certain degrees, right? My family doesn't require too much from me, mm -hmm. right? It's just the basic things that I do. But I know friends who you have to like um, pay school fees for this, pay for this, pay rent and all that. So it's heavy on different sides. Mm -hmm. Now, economically, the black tax has really gone to help African economies. Mm -hmm. If I ask you a question, guess how much? I can give you the Nigerian numbers, right? Mm -hmm. In the last three years, how much do you think has gone into Nigeria f as foreign? So we have 1.7 million Nigerians mm -hmm. abroad officially. Wow. <laughs> officially. Wow. So in all the countries, that's what we don't know the other ones that we don't know about. If I ask you, how much do you think has been remitted to Nigeria in the last three years? I cannot <coughs> put a number to it. Guess. Oof. Just guess. A million? A oh million dear. dollars? Oh dear God. Kay. Try the letter B. Billion? $65 billion. Like has going? left Nigerians in diaspora. And this is through official channels. 
This is where you send through money apps, you send through banks, so they can track that. For family responsibility. Yes, exactly. Yes. And for building houses and all Thanks. that. Now, there are times when I'm traveling, somebody says to me, no, sir, this $1,000, give it to my mom. Nobody tracks that. Mm -hmm. so, so you have to understand that it is an, it's a whole economy on its own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a whole economy mm -hmm. on its own because, again, back to our communal way of thinking and back to the things that um, uh, my, my sister in Philosophia just spoke about because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you have a responsibility. The, ch the, the challenge, though, is this. When we leave and come to the diaspora, it's for economic reasons. Absolutely. Nobody leaves Nigeria at uh, plus 35 to come to minus 40. No. Because they love the snow. Mm. <laughs> it's for economic reasons. We're all economic migrants. And when the question is asked, why are you here? Because there's always an intention. Mm -hmm. The answer is, I came here for my children. Mm, right? Greener pastures. Exactly. So that my kids don't suffer what I suffer. But guess what? Because, not, not entirely because of this to an extent because of this black tax, mm -hmm. you really don't have the time for those kids. And uh, you unconsciously, you're sending to another generation the responsibility that you took on, mm -hmm. that your father took on. Mm -hmm. You're expecting that your, your child will take care of you. But guess what? All the kids that we have here, mm -hmm. <laughs> they will shock you. Like in Nigeria, they say it will shock you, right? <laughs> they will shock you to understand that these kids don't even understand what you're doing and why you're sending all that money back home. No. Mm. So that is the, the challenge with black tax, where um, the expectation is high back home. Whenever the e economic indices go down, mm -hmm. where there's high interest rates are down and, or are high and people are suffering, they expect the you to understand abroad and send the money and increase your own but nobody really understands that you also have bills here to pay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have the child that you said you came because of that child, has a gym membership, has a sports thing that they have to do, and most entirely, your retirement. Which most of us don't save for. We don't. So, mm -hmm. and I'll give you an example, right? Mm -hmm. Most of us, the average age of the African who's come here mm -hmm. is around 35 years old, okay? It means, essentially, your counterparts who are who have been in, who were born here, have been working from age 20, 18, so that's about 22 years old, mm -hmm. 22 years ahead of you. Mm -hmm. So they've been, they've been contributing to their RESOP, which is a retirement fund, for 22 years before you came. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have retirement back home. We all know what the value of the, the African um, currencies are. It goes down. So if you bring the money here, probably just not even buy your car. Mm -hmm. so, so the guy who's here, whose parents, uh, they get better in here, has a, a head start on you. Mm -hmm. So you come at age 35, mm -hmm. and that's when you're starting to like contribute to your pension fund. If, if you won't contribute, mm -hmm. right? For mm -hmm. those of people who came earlier, they didn't understand the concept of, of these pension funds. They're just having their fun. They are, they're eating. In fact, I, I, I had, I had, when I used to live in England, I worked for a bank in England, and I was lucky to even take, yes, take money from my, money for, for pensions. Fast forward last year, about 10 years, I looked and like, oh, I have some money in this thing. Oh. Mm -hmm. I can take it when I'm 55. Mm -hmm. My friend and I started work at the same time. He took, no, give me my money. I'm going to blow it. Mm -hmm. When I was telling him how much I had saved while I was in England working for this bank for eight years, he's like, oh, really? How? How? The mm -hmm. value. Mm -hmm. So and I, I didn't even know about it was by mistake. <laughs> I think <ticked, laughs> that's okay, just take this amount out. So the point I'm trying to make is, we come and say we're here for the kids, we're here for our retirement, but are we? Mm. And I don't intentionally want to blame it on black tax alone, but there's a portion of it when you you take probably each each person takes about about ten percent of their income goes to friends and family in different shapes and form mm -hmm. every month. Mm -hmm. So the cultural thing is good, but also it's trifling, and you have to yeah. determine whether are you. Is this needed? Are you helping somebody or are you enabling somebody? Mm -hmm. That's and another aspect. And that's a really good point because I think we struggle to come to that determination. Mm -hmm. um, I find there's almost like a mental transition that happens when you cross the waters. Mm. <laughs> yes. When you come the side of the world, right? Mm. Um, one of my courses that we took in um, for my social work bachelor's or master's degree actually, yeah. was on mental decolonization. Mm -hmm. And that spoke quite a bit on how 
most of the things we're doing, we've been programmed to do yeah. for mm. a while. Mm. Mm. And so we just continue in that without asking questions. And we don't, if you don't ask questions, then you don't see a reason to shift from that mindset. Totally. Yes. Right? Because I value community. But then sometimes it feels like, you are more in the community than the other person. It's not sort of like a mutual benefit. Mm -hmm. It's not, like it's mm -hmm. not a symbiotic yeah. relationship. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like a give and give and give yes. and receive mm -hmm. and receive and receive relationship, yeah. which yeah. is what I think most of us diasporans struggle with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we don't see a similar support from the other side. Yeah. Yeah. When we talk about some people stand to gain, some people stand to lose. Yes. Mm -hmm. From where I see it, I feel like diasporans are on the losing end, especially those who want to maintain that mindset of the black tax and maintaining those responsibilities. Mm. Yeah. And those in Africa stand to gain. Well, Would you agree? Well, it's 50-50. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing. Mm -hmm. um, when somebody is overseas here, mm -hmm. um, there's a few psychological things that play into this whole black tax um, matter. <laughs> because uh, on the one hand, we feel like we're being, well, okay, it's, it's a mixture of responsibility mm -hmm. and being used. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or That's being abused. Much. Abused, yes. Plus, <laughs> mm -hmm. We ourselves actually sometimes love it. Yep. There's that side we, of we play, We play yeah. God. Yeah. We play God. Ah, I, I tell that's you. That's a solid yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, we play God. It because, is. you know, I mean, like, there's some people who feel like if they are not the ones responsible for somebody advancing, if they feel like somebody mm -hmm. took something away from them. Totally. So there's an ego there. We, there's mm -hmm. a big ego. I mean, you can explain the ego when somebody takes their credit card buys uh, something that they don't, they can't afford, takes pictures and sends it back home. What mm. are they trying to say? Yeah. They're sending, sending the wrong message. <laughs> Social media. They're sending messages, they go stand beside the Mercedes Benz that is not their own, mm. in the parking lot mm. somewhere, mm. take a picture and send it to their family. Oh my goodness, my brother has arrived. Mm. So they actually, we sometimes, like you said, yeah. and we enable them. Mm. We are the ones who are creating the monster. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, mm. because here's the thing. If, if somebody comes out and they've been abroad for 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. the family should no longer be dependent. After 10, 15 years, the dependency at some point should end. Mm. Mm. It should not be a forever thing. So if it's a forever thing, then the problem is from us. Mm. But you have the nieces and the nephews and the why? grandchildren. Why? So, okay, so, so, so here's the, why, why should I have the nieces and the nephews <laughs> when I have also helped my brother? Yeah. Huh. So if I have helped my brother, mm -hmm. I have my family, he has his family. If the, if the family has helped me, mm -hmm. and then I struggle and help my brother, mm. my brother should help himself. Mm. There's got to be a point when the brother should graduate. The same <laughs> way me, I have graduated. <laughs> so if I have like seven siblings and say I'm the firstborn, which mm -hmm. is usually the biggest yeah, problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm the firstborn, mm -hmm. and then the, every, the whole family claims that they're the ones that raised me, no problem. Even the firstborns now, don't even. <laughs> exactly. It's the person who has money that's firstborn now. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. okay, I'm the one that has the money. The breadwinner. Mm -hmm. So you raise the first one, yeah. they should be able to take so. it from there. Mm -hmm. You raise the second one, let's say you now help everybody. Mm -hmm. At some point, you need to live your life. I, I want but, but we ourselves are the ones yes. stopping it. You make mm -hmm. a very valid point. Mm -hmm. So some of us feel that when we send money back home, we feel a sense of I've arrived. Right. Yeah. Yes. Maybe something happens as a wedding or a funeral happened in Nigeria. They say the whole thing is going to cost five million naira, and the rest people they share the amounts equally mm -hmm. amongst people back home. But you get the larger chunk because you earn dollars, and you don't you don't question it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you pay for it, mm -hmm. and even if. Uh, even after you share that money, some people still didn't pay their own. You take on and pay. Mm -hmm. So it gives you that sense of, yeah, a little bit of complex. That, okay, and for some people. Some people, it's just, let me just do good. Now, you have make a very, very valid point where the dependency has to at some point stop. Mm -hmm. 
and I'll take you to this. So you mentioned the three major tribes, right? Mm. The um, Igbo, Yoruba, and the Hausa. Mm -hmm. So the, the Igbo people have a system called the one boy. Okay. So this is the most economical, the beneficial black tax system in the world. Mm. It is, quote me and I'll say it again, it is the most <laughs> beneficial economic black tax system in the world. Okay. The system is driven very simple. After the Civil War um, in Nigeria, in, mm -hmm. this, in the late 60s, early 70s, mm -hmm. the Igbo tribe, uh, they're very resilient people, very very business-minded. It is said that the Igbo man can send you, sell you ice cream in winter. Oh. It can sell you sand in the desert, right? And it's true because mm. these this guys understand business. There's no mm -hmm. much for... The, the educational value is there based on the state, but they actually place more value on the on on what they learn on the streets, mm -hmm. and it actually goes on to help them. So this is the system. This I think is the system we should all adopt. Mm. When I have brothers in the village, and I make it to Lagos, which is diaspora mm -hmm. in right. a sense, or I move it abroad, it is, and I start a trade, spare parts. I sell anything, furniture or anything. It, they now know that, okay, the next in line is your cousin, your older cousin or your older brother from this family. So what you do is after it's somewhat stabilized, you bring somebody from the village. Mm -hmm. He stays with you and learns the trade for three years or something. Okay. And then when he's going, because while he's with you, you're feeding him. He's in your house. You're clothing him. You're keeping money aside. When he's going, you now give him some money and say, go start your own business. He never comes back. He hardly ever comes back to you. Mm -hmm. Hardly mm -hmm. ever. It is his own job to also take somebody else from the village, train them for three the years. Favor. So it's like that. It's a web. Mm. Ah, you're teaching how to fish. Yes, exactly. yes. Instead so of just giving. Totally. Yes. And and if you look at look at it from that angle, you find that the Igbo people in, of Nigeria are the most industrious. And independent. Independent, very mm. independent. And they'll they'll go into a space and then you know pretty much um, how would I say be dynamic enough to create wealth. And they're not only creating wealth for themselves, it's generational wealth that way. It's growing. So if only we could adapt that. So for that, it's economic. And that I applaud 100%. Mm -hmm. If all other tribes who take that on. Mm -hmm. Now, but for the rest of us, who some of us still, some other tribes practice it. It is just the idea of a responsibility that I have to do because I'm the first child, to your mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. Or I'm the guy whose God has blessed with some money, mm -hmm. right, to every other person's point. Now, we had an argument with a friend one day, and what they do is once they understand that you earn this much, maybe they say they earn $5,000 in Canadian dollars every mm -hmm. month, they are ahead, oh my God, $5,000 times, times 1,000 1, naira. <laughs> that's, this guy is 5 million naira a that's month. That's how we do the calculation. Yeah, that's how. It's like Leo and but, oh. but the question is, they don't understand that you don't pay your, your mortgage here in naira. naira. You don't pay your car notes in naira, you're paying your car notes in 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 um in dollars. Mm -hmm. So by the time you broke it down, so what I now tell them, I say, yeah, that's a very good idea. But hey, listen, my mortgage is two thousand dollars a month. If you translate that, that's two million naira in a month. Yes. Who pays rent two million naira in Nigeria? So th there's always yeah. that balance where even in the year, because in the year, no, in a year, in a year you get. I know in Sierra Leone they pay in a year. Like in the year, so like yeah, that's what annually. we do. That's right. what we do. Mm -hmm. So no, p if you if you can actually get decent rent for a million naira in a year mm -hmm. for a whole year. But I'm paying that a month. For exactly. Mortgage. So I, you translate that. Now, the issue of black tax will not go away. Okay. Because it sounds like from what you just said yeah. with, the, with the other group, mm -hmm. there are benefits to it. There is. I, and, and that group is approaching it both, both from a communal um, perspective and yeah. an individual account, yeah. um, perspective. Yeah. So I think if we find that happy balance between the two, mm -hmm. yes. where it's more collaboration than one person being the giver and the other being the Take receiver, yeah. Yeah. I think we'll find a good way to move forward with it. Yes. Which is where I want us to go, yeah. like the yeah. moving forward aspect of things. Mm -hmm. You yeah. and I, um, Dr. Rose, have talked quite a bit about um, investments yes. here, um, getting out of that circle. That that yeah. trap <laughs> exactly. of even living like the luxurious lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. overseas, it's easy, it's really easy mm. to get caught into that trap of like driving the Pretty most cuts. recent vehicle because yeah. you get all those things, mm. but that just means for the rest of your life, you probably are going to be paying debts and yeah. not exactly. be able to save anything. Yeah. So talking about the way forward mm -hmm. to the diasporans here, yeah. those that are coming, 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, th th there's so many there's so many things we could do. Mm -hmm. uh, so many ideas we can generate. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we can uh, explore. So, first of all, in, we are told God tells us that we should love our neighbor as ourselves. Mm. Beautiful. So we need to love ourselves first. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're in an airplane, they tell you if there's an emergency, <laughs> you need to mask yourself first before you pull the mask on the next person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to be alive and well before you can overextend to Absolutely. family. Mm -hmm. We cannot ignore family, but at the oh. same time, um, we don't want a leachy relationship mm. Mm. where they drink your blood mm. and then you die and then they go find the next victim. Totally. Yeah. Right? Totally. Because, because I, I tell and you, it happens. people mm. back home, are, I'm not generalizing, mm. Many times, because they don't understand the economy here, they take it for granted mm. what we send to them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they actually think, oh, is it just this 500 oh, that you're I sending me? I yeah, get like a penny anytime I get that. Is it oh, just so did they do that in Sierra Leone? Oh, you only sent me, like <laughs> you <only laughs> <sense> me <laughs> this, this $50. Yeah. You, yeah. As, if, as if I, I, uh, as if <laughs> I, I, they, they don't understand that the $50 that I sent them yeah. was sweat and blood $50. And, and it's taken understand. away from my expenses. The, the piece is this, they don't understand that $50 you sent to maybe four other people as well. Exactly, they don't get it. Like yeah. it's, so, so there's a lot of misunderstanding, that's one. Number two, um, now my family is all overseas. Mm. I've been mm. I've been in Canada for thirty one years. Oh That's right. why you're glowing. <laughs> <laughs> now yes. I know the secret. Yes. I'm, six, I'm sixty, but I'm so sixty. Oh wow, nice. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So so what I'm talking to you about is mm. ex people have talked to me about many many things. Mm -hmm. My family has been over here for many like I think the last one came in more than twenty years ago. Mm. Mm -hmm. But but what I'm saying is, I know people who send money to their brother, for example, to go, okay, uh, build a house. I know one guy who said, he sent money and kept sending money and kept sending money to his brother to build a house. Mm -hmm. And the brother kept sending him some pictures. So he thought that this house was there. Oh and then no. one day he bought a ticket, went back home, and there was no house. And he said it. he was gonna kill his brother, mm. right? I, I mean, I mean, maybe he was joking, maybe yeah. he was not, I don't know. But, but do you know how much money yeah, that guy, do you know how much over time that he went through yeah. to be able to send all that money? Mm -hmm. up and $67 billion a year is it's no joke. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. No joke. We're actually, so this is, the, the governments are actually looking for, for money from diasporas, right? Yeah. Because we, it's not, so when I'm sending money, there's the house building, right? Yeah. But the economic ripple effect is that in that house building, um, you get a builder who is building the house, yes. who has kids and a wife who then pays school fees, mm -hmm. and the school fees pays salary. So that sixty-seven billion goes into running the whole economy. It goes ah. into oiling the economy. That's yeah. why um, people would come and say they need foreign investment. The diaspora in most countries, African countries, contributes at least I don't know what the figures are, at least twenty percent, thirty percent of foreign direct investment. Yeah. Right? And if only like recently they created a bond in Nigeria where I think you get up to seventeen percent um, on the on monthly on, on, on per annum, whatever you put into that bond, right? Mm -hmm. So because they need to suck money in. And if mm -hmm. China is refusing, America is refusing to give you a loan, your diaspora people are the people who would help you. You yeah. go to yeah. Yeah, you go to wow. us. Yeah. Yeah. And we have the money. Like yeah, the money is there, yeah. right? There. Yeah, but then really to be, you know, going it's forward. It's not visible in our accounts, though. That, that's what mm. we need to do. Because every year that I'm filing taxes, mm. and my taxes, Patricia, that's how much you made. Yeah. I'm just like, You're not seeing it's it? not me. Oh, really? It's not this Patricia, it's not because you. this money is not in it's my not account, and I don't account. see it anywhere. But so it's not just you, though. Like, we're talking 1.7. Nigerians only. only we yeah. haven't mentioned Ghanaians. Yeah, we haven't even. Liberians, I don't know the numbers for those Congolese, guys. Yeah. Like all of Africa, there's 52, yeah. 52 countries. 54, yeah. Mm -hmm. 54 yeah. countries in Africa. Mm. 1.7 Nigerians. Nigerians. 67 billion dollars yeah. from one country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In three years. So yeah. by the time you. Uh, Average of twenty billion dollars a year. Yeah, twenty one. By yeah. the time you bring all the other countries together, mm -hmm. you will see where the well, money well, is coming from. Yeah, yeah. But then we need to. You ask the question: How do we move forward? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
We gotta live in order to help. Mm, we gotta live. We gotta be alive help. in order to help. Mm. Yes. You can't extend what you don't have. Mm. Mm -mm. So two things we need to do. One is we need to stop giving the impression that we are more than we are. Mm. Ah. <laughs> We false life honest with our people. Like, <laughs> we live a false life. It's terrible. Yeah. Like, stop taking pictures with another man's car and <laughs> send it to them. It's not yours. <coughs> not yours. Okay. But then coming back home now, uh -huh. I was in a, um, I was in a uh, an association conversation mm -hmm. with Icon. Uh, okay. Yeah, recently. Mm. And, and here's what I said to them: Coming back home, we need to take care of ourselves to the point where we don't turn around and become dependent on them. Yeah. Mm. So let's say I send all my money, all my money, mm. all my money to them. I'm not saving for my retirement. Mm. No. And then I carry my bag. I've built a house in Nigeria. I carry my bag. I say, I'm going to go retire back home. All those brothers I helped, they will help me. Not lie. You will be the laughing stock. <laughs> not, not lie. And before you know, they, they will, I mean, you become useless. Uh -huh. So you've got to take care of yourself first mm. so that you don't become, turn around to become dependent. Mm. Yeah, because after seven Because they are smarter than you. And you they will not encourage you. You to them all the time. <laughs> They're used to receiving from you. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you mm. now turn around and say, oh, why don't you guys send me money? They're going to go like... Mm. What's happened here? That's not the relationship we have here. And then they're going to go here. find the next victim. Mm -hmm. Because then you're done. They've milked you out. You're the, you're the cow. Mm -hmm. When they milk you down, <laughs> they go find the next cow. And now you're left cursing and you're swearing. You're left mm -hmm. on your For own. Nothing. <laughs> and that's your fault. Too, and that's our fault. Time. We're the ones who give them all our money. Yeah. So we need to take care of ourselves. We need to buy a house. Stop renting. Stop renting. Many of us um, uh, run the economy back home. And we're renting here. Yeah, that's a disaster. That's a that's a one. disaster because somebody can <laughs> rent a year, two years, ten years. Yeah. So if you rent for ten years, for example, on average, you're the banker. Fourteen hundred a month. Fourteen hundred a month times fourteen thousand a year, then ten years and one hundred. One hundred and forty thousand. Yeah. Let's say somebody even came. You said thirty-five. I was mm. I was in my head. It's not thirty-five or okay. maybe average. Yeah. Some somebody comes here at age fifty. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. They don't average. save for themselves. Yeah, I don't know. They don't have money. They are renting here. Mm -hmm. They want to retire in the next uh, 15 years in Nigeria mm -hmm. at age 65. Mm -hmm. Which money are they going to take back home? Yeah. There's if you're renting. Yeah. You don't have there's money. Not a, so there's not, a, there's not a strategic um, um, outlook. Yeah, and it's a very scary topic, so people don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. People don't talk about it. And that's one of the things. And, and this is the thing, though. It's not as if the people back home are even better off based on the money that they're taking from you or other victims, right? So if you go back to the crab mentality, in the, in the basket you have so many crabs. So when one crab is going up, they pull that crab down. Mm -hmm. So all the crabs are in the basket. Like we must stay here. Yeah, well, let's stay here, that's how it is. So that is what actually happens. Mm -hmm. So when you're over-dependent and you've not taught a man to fish, you know, aka the Igbo system of um, entrepreneurship, the ego is going to pull you down. They said there's, there's an adage that says that there's no, you can't have one rich man in a village. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. everybody's going to be poor mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So the point is this, as good as the system is, mm -hmm. you know, the Yoruba people say something, oh, they pa kete kete, mm. meaning you cannot, kete kete is a kete horse. Kete. Yeah, Kete Kete is, sorry, Kete Kete is a horse, the ass, the donkey. donkey. The donkey. <laughs> yeah, so they, they're very good at carrying load, carrying heavy water, right? But at some point, Kete Kete will die. Mm. So the point is, back home, we also need to, like I said, some families are great at it. I don't, they don't call on me too much, right? But they do once in a while, and I do. But I know families who literally, the guy's a kete kete and he's almost dying, doesn't pick up calls mm. anymore. Mm -hmm. my, my calls come from friends, right? Mm. So, so the thing is this, to your point, let's, I would say, make people understand that, hey, this money is not being picked from the ground. Mm. Too like we thought it was before yeah. we came. <laughs> <laughs> to, to learn to say no. No is a big one. Yeah, learn to say no because no gives you control back. Mm -hmm. All right? It's a big one. Don't say, I'll think about it. Don't say, because if you tell a Nigerian person, I'll see what I will do. Ah. It means that you're going to do it. You promise. So They'll find you. So <laughs> find you. Yeah. So yeah. they should just say, hey, listen, I'll think about it. Uh, no, sorry. And then also think strategically around 
where do you want to be at age 60? Mm. Where do you want to be at age 65? Right? Do you want to stay back in that? For me, I, this is too cold for me. You know, <laughs> this is too cold. I'm not going to be here at a certain age, right? Huh. So I got to start thinking, okay, what am I going to be doing? What will generate income for me in that age, mm. right? If you're going to be staying here, all oh, well and good for you. So have you calculated backwards to say, okay, I came here at age 35. When I retire at 65, how much do I get monthly mm. as my pension? And I think Is that's 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 that mindset of like not wanting to be here at age 65. Mm -hmm. And I know we're almost out of time here. Mm -hmm. But I think that mindset of out not of wanting time? to be yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't even started, yeah, right? Yeah. right? Like we just started this conversation. Mm -hmm. But that mindset of like um I don't want to be here at the age of 65 mm -hmm. because it's too cold and the mm -hmm. weather is not conducive. Yeah. I think that's what puts us, most of us diasporans, in that mindset of I investing back home. No, I don't but have to go back home either. That, but <laughs> I, I, I think most of us, though, are thinking, yeah, come, let's invest, yeah. work, yeah. invest, yeah. go. Yeah. But because of that same mindset, mm -hmm. we're investing through people who have not invested for themselves, so they are hoping to establish themselves through mm -hmm. the money that we send and we're not there to monitor it. We're not investing, sister. No. <laughs> no. Losing, that's when another you argument. give that money, yeah. but people a, who want to build, it's like a people hole. who are sending to build and like establish stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. I tried doing it. Like I went home and, and, and tried to purchase my land. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like a land. Yeah. I actually used my RSP to do it. Mm. Uh-huh. I don't want to get in trouble for that. But... I still don't have that land. It's over a year it's and your they RSP still have is your money. Okay. It's fine. Good. Mm. It's your money. You, you can pay your tax. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I paid so much money. I've paid like two thirds of the money that I need because I'm like, okay, I'm young. This is when I invest. Mm. And I still do yeah, not have papers for the, land? the papers for that land. And I may never have it. Yeah. yeah. So stuff S like that. So that's not invested. But I thought I, I like I thought I was investing, investing, right? So what we need to figure out uh -huh. is how to strategically invest, mm. how to invest correctly. Yes. Okay. That's how a to whole subject? It's back. a whole. We're gonna have to come back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 leave, I'll leave this with you. I'll say to you, <laughs> in practical terms, if you send ten thousand dollars back to uh -huh. to your country, for example, uh -huh. if you build a house and all of that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, people say invest, invest, invest. It's it's a great word, right? But for any investment, it has to be a return, right? Mm. The question is, if you go and build a palace back home in 10 years' time, when you go back, for example, what is the value of that compared to palace. the value you invested? And you invested in dollars. And guess what? Guess what? Mm -hmm. You're based on the economy in Africa. The African, econo um, uh, well, the African um, currencies mm -hmm. are falling. So when I'll give you an example now. And uh, I had a friend who had a building in Lagos, I was collecting rent, mm -hmm. right? When inside the building, the rent was paying him, when they bring him back to Canada, it was $2,500 a month, mm -hmm. which was good, right? Because the value of the Naira in Nigeria was depreciating. Mm -hmm. At some point, it came to $2,000. Mm -hmm. The guy's like, ah, this money has gone down. The point, uh, uh, three, three years later, he was now collecting, for the same amount of rent, $1,500. At some point, I said, bro, you're going to be collecting $500 every month for this thing because our money is going down. And then he sold the house. Because at the end of the day, you know, he wasn't even able to maintain the house because this thing was depreciating. They'll call you for a roof that is leaking and mm -hmm. things like that. So investment is relative. I just want to say black tax is good mm -hmm. to an extent if there's an economic um, arrow, arrow eye to it, which I still love the Igbo system. But again, if it's one where you're enabling a habit, you're buying shoes for people back home, and you're you're not really really you're not helping. taking care of yourself. It's something that you have to take a second look at. Check your ego in that. <laughs> <laughs> Any last words from you, Dr. Rose? Oh my God, last words. <sighs> uh, yeah. Well, thank you so much mm -hmm. for having us. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it was really great to yeah, have a sit yeah. with my brother and have yeah. a this chat. Mm -hmm. uh, well, this conversation just. Started. <laughs> we we need to help our people. Yeah. Uh, and the matter of black tax, we haven't even touched how it affects families. Mm -hmm. Where you know, the wife, the yeah. wife the needs black tax. The husband is the budget. Yeah. We haven't touched that one yet. Mm -hmm. We haven't touched um, you know the housing and the getting a house, uh, getting 
during your retirement. We haven't touched that. We haven't touched the impact of the black tax where our children are working and we're collecting money from our own children and giving back home. Mm -hmm. Like this, like it's it's a serious matter. Mm -hmm. So I think um, thanks again mm -hmm. for having us, and uh, we'll have to come back. Absolutely. And that's that's that. That's a good point because then that tells me that season three, I have to make at least two or three episodes. Three episodes to continue this conversation. Because yes. especially on that side of investment, yes. I feel like most of us diasporans need a lot of education Financial on literacy. how yeah. to make home away from home. Yes. And have that mental detox so that we can actually invest in the mm. way investment is done. Yes. In this part of the world and not just rely on what we believe yes. Yes. investment is. Yeah. But thank you both so very much. I knew this was going to be a treat and it did not disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send a quick shout out to Joyce. I will put up her information. She's the beautiful makeup artist who thought it was a good idea to have mercy upon my makeup <laughs> malfunction <laughs> that I've been having. <laughs> and just Give me this beautiful makeup for today. Um, thank you so much, Joyce. I would put up your information so people know how to connect with you. She does hair. She does makeup for wedding, for all events. Um, we've had a beautiful conversation. And again, you asked for part two for family responsibilities. Here you are. <laughs> Here you have it. Watch out for season three because there's going to be a few more episodes on how we can actually implement solutions in our best interest. Um, you are not bad for following those ways of knowing. However, you are a human being yourself. Your mental health is important. Your physical health is important. And you have to learn how to find that balance in yours and the best interest of your community members as well. Because if you teach them how to fish, you'll be amazed at what you all will get out of it. Until our next um, episode, Sabe, Sandindin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sabe, Sandindin. <laughs>